Hello, I am here today to talk about CSS grids a little bit more uh, to look at how order and placement uh, can affect when auto placement um, needs to do its thing. And so in this particular uh, page, this code pen that I've got up, uh, you will notice that uh, I am doing autofill uh, in a couple different ways. So I've got autofill and auto fit uh, for these elements, um, but I'm doing a couple interesting things. Um, in this case, um, in each of these, I've taken the second element, number two, and I've assigned it to grid column five. Now, uh, in this first one, you can see, you know, you've got one, and then two is way over here. And that's because uh, essentially what it's done is it's placed it into column five, one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, for all the elements that come after that, it has tried to place them within the grid. So right after that, three, four, and five uh, onto the next line. And so it basically, it's created this gap because I've, I've placed that element um, into that, that particular place. Now, I've done a little bit of a different thing here with the one right next to it, which is I've set the order to one. Um, and what that does is it basically, uh, similar to Flexbox, Flexbox has the ability to reorder items. Uh, you can do the same thing with grids. So what I've done here is I have said, okay, this particular element actually placed to the end of the stack. And as a result of that, with the autofill, what it's done is it's, uh, since the, the this element here is now at the end of the, the list of items, it can actually flow those other items before that because it has space for that one, three, four, five. Um, it's, we've got the, the room for that. Um, but you'll notice if I uh, resize down, um, the moment I, I no longer have room for those five columns, it does some interesting things to that last item. Uh, basically, there's, there's no room, so uh, it has to collapse that space because I've set up a thing saying that it has to be a minimum of 200 pixels wide and so it can't do five columns um, and therefore that fifth column it needs to collapse that. Um, so that's always an interesting thing and you, you can actually run into a situation where you get this like overflow issue with that so that's something as well that you, you'll need to be aware of when placing elements uh, in slots that may not actually have room for that slot. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. Now, uh, obviously the difference between autofill um, and auto fit um, uh, in this case is how many columns can it fit? Um, I just realized I am not explaining that well. I'm going to skip over that because I don't want to uh, screw that up and, and lead you off into a different direction that I may not completely understand myself. So, okay, we've got all that, but what if we still wanted to kind of keep this? One of the things we can do here is we, we can adjust the grid auto flow to uh, dense. And in this case, uh, that gap that we had there before, uh, in this case, what it's done is even though I had that, that starting element over here and it tried to flow everything after that, uh, with, with the auto flow dense, it basically says, hey, you've got these gaps over here. You have these uh, elements that can fit in there. Why don't I actually reflow those things? And so now you start to see similar behavior between the auto fill uh, and the auto fill with order. Um, they actually um, kind of look the same here. Um, and you'll notice they actually kind of behave the same too um, as we resize our, our elements down. So um, we start to see a, um, a very similar behavior um, using that particular property. Now, in this case, you know, our, our placement here is, as I basically said, place things into the fifth column. Uh, we have another way that we can actually do that as well. Is that we can actually use negative uh, numbers for placement. Uh, in this case, what I've done is, as I've said, okay, for this element, uh, span negative one. So, you know, if we start from the left, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, but if we're using negative numbers, we start from the right, negative one, negative two, negative three. And so I've said span from uh, negative one to negative two. So it's going to fit into that last column. Um, and the other thing that I've said here is grid row one. So put it on the first row and, and that'll become a little bit clearer as I continue. So as I resize down, uh, in this case, we've got five columns. It can fit them five by side, side by side. Um, as I continue to size down, uh, there's no longer the room. And, and you'll notice here, it's not collapsing that element in the same way that it did uh, with the very specific placement. When I said grid column five, that would have been over here and not have enough room. So in this case, I've got... Uh, the, the negative placement, um, I guess, kind of avoids those kind of situations um, because it, it's 
place that in a very specific spot, but it still has the ability to flow the other ones uh, left to right around that particular placement. And again, as I continue down, it flows onto multiple lines. Um, this is doing what you would probably expect it to do. And then lastly here, um, the autofill, um, again, because it's doing negative one to negative two, it's in that initial slot and everything flows um, underneath that. So doing, I think, probably uh, something a little bit more expected. Um, now, so with the, the good row one, if I, if I like eliminate that, um, then we kind of see some interesting behavior. So again, with the, um, because this is placed uh, in that particular slot, um, the other items try to flow around that. Uh, so as I resize down, um, we still see sort of a similar behavior, uh, except with the fact that everything is flowing underneath it. And as we, we talked about, you know, there's a couple different ways that we could adjust that. So we can do the, the grid um, auto flow dense to um, these items will fit within those particular items. Or again, we can do something where we, we change the order, um, which gives us a slightly different behavior. So with the order here, um, you know, order one, if you can imagine everything just kind of having a default order, order one will place that after those particular elements. Um, so as a result, um, you know, here where it's got space on this particular row, um, now in this case, because it doesn't have room on that particular row, it moves to row number two. Um, and so again, similar thing, like we can kind of run into this situation. So it's one, three, four, five, there's the space because we've specifically placed this. Um, from negative one to negative two. And so again, we might be able to do some pretty interesting uh, layout things uh, with this. So uh, just something to uh, consider as you take a look at placing specific elements in specific cells and how the flow uh, would work around those particular things. Anyway, these have been my uh, explorations. I uh, hope you're enjoying them. Thank you.